This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today we are going to start our next segment of the GIT that is the stomach. It means the special pathology of the stomach. So starting with the gastritis. So as its name indicate, itis means inflammation. Itis means inflammation. So it means the inflammation of the gastric mucosa. Gastritis means the inflammation of the gastric mucosa. And inflammation means it, it will be obviously having the inflammatory cells. If the inflammatory cells is neutrophil, it means that it will be acute gastritis. Clear? This will be acute gastritis. Now here once uh, we will be uh, making one, of, one more terminology that is very important to be discussed here. That is gastropathy. Now what is gastropathy? Gastropathy is also basically the damage to the mucosa of the stomach but without the inflammatory cells. You can simply say no inflammation or no inflammatory cells. Clear? Now, what are the basic causes of the damage of the mucosa or you can say the stomach mucosa? What are the main causes or you can say what are the agents that cause the damage of the mucosa? That are the NSAIDs, alcohol, bile, you can say stress induced injury, stress injury, clear. Then we have the portal hypertension, then hemorrhage. They all are, you can say the agents that can result, that can result in the mucosa damage or you can say that can result in the gastritis or the gastropathy. Now, for both of them, for the gastritis and gastropathy, we have the symptoms or you can say the clinical features of the gastritis and gastropathy. Very easy. First is the epigastric pain. Epigastric pain means in the epigastric region, which is this one is the epigastric region just below your, you can say ribs or you can say the sternum in the central region here, the epigastric region. This is the epigastric region. Here you, you will be feeling the pain. The patient of the gastritis and gastropathy will be feeling the pain in this epigastric region. Then obviously we will be having the nausea, vomiting and then we have the mucosal erosion if the disease is not treated so mucosal erosion it may lead to the ulceration obviously this ulceration if not treated if the disease is continued it may lead to the hemorrhage and this hemorrhage may lead to the hematemesis means blood in the vomiting or it may lead to the melena means blood in the stool so this is the whole progression of this disease you can say and these are the symptoms the epigastric pain nausea and the vomiting now we are moving on towards the pathogenesis of this disease now one thing i have to explain you here for suppose i'm making it here for suppose we have this the stomach clear this is the stomach for suppose this is the stomach and this is the cardia means this is the cardia the cardiac region of the stomach this is the fundus this is the body and you can say this part is the antrum and this is the pylorus of the stomach clear now here for suppose here is your acidic secretion or you can say the, here is the acidic environment here. So this is the mucosa for suppose of the stomach. Now this acid obviously it will, it will be causing damage to the mucosa of the stomach. So what are certain mechanisms through which the mucosa of the stomach itself it is protected. So there are certain defense mechanism of the muc or you can say of the stomach itself to protect itself from the acidic secretion from the acidic environment of the stomach lumen. So what are those def uh, defense mechanisms that we will be studying in the pathogenesis and if there is a defect in those defense mechanism obviously it will be leading to the gastritis or the gastropathy. So we are moving on towards the pathogenesis and in pathogenesis first of all I will be telling you the normal defense mechanisms clear pathogenesis. 
Now, in the pathogenesis, we have certain defense mechanism. First of all, we will be studying to uh, to study, or uh, you can say to understand the pathogenesis, we have to understand the defense mechanism. So there are two main defense mechanism. First of all, is the surface mucus secretion. Surface mucus secretion. Now there are certain cells in the stomach. In which region? In the cardia region. In this region, we have certain cells that are known as the foveolar cells, or you can say mucosal cells. These are the cells which secretes the mucus. They secrete mucus, and this mucus it forms a layer. You can say over the epithelium it forms a layer or a covering. You can say it forms around the epithelium. For suppose this is your stomach here. Clear? This is your stomach. Just it's not a good diagram, but suppose it's a stomach, and here is your mucus secretion. This is for suppose is your epithelium. This is your epithelium. of the stomach and here the mucus secretion is there so this mucus it will be forming like this a covering over this epithelium and in this way what happens that your stomach mucus or your stomach epithelium will be protected clear so the this is the uh, foveolar cells the muco the mucosal cells that secretes the mucus clear and now this uh, mucus secretion this mucosal cells they uh, basically the mucus it is alkaline itself why because of the bicarbonate ion secretion by the epithelial cells clear this mucosa this mucus itself it is alkaline because of the bicarbonate ion secretion from the epithelial cells so first defense mechanism is the surface mucus secretion now we are moving on towards the second defense mechanism that is the epithelial cells basically these epithelial cells they prevent the movement of the acid from the epithelium towards the lamina propria means these epithelial cells they are very important because they prevent the movement of the acid from the epithelial cells towards the lamina propria clear then we have that if for suppose that the acid has moved towards the lamina propria in case if it is moved so here also we have another defense mechanism in the lamina propria and what is that in the lamina propria we have the high a uh, high means you can say microvasculature is very high you can say lamina propria is very rich in the microvasculature that uh, what results means what it causes it causes that it basically it washes away the acid and it supplies the oxygen or it delivers the oxygen so these are the basic defense mechanisms the surface mucus secretion the epithelial cells and the lamina propria the high vasculature the microvasculature rich lamina propria and if there is a defect in these defense mechanism it may lead to the gastritis and gastropathy now one of the cause i told you that ansets Here, here, come here. NSAIDs. How they cause the gastritis, or how may they may lead to the gastritis? Basically, here I am writing here NSAIDs. NSAIDs basically they inhibit COX. What is COX? Cyclooxygenase enzyme. Clear? This cyclooxygenase enzyme basically normally it forms the prostaglandins and the prostacyclins. clear now what these prostaglandins and prostacyclins they do prostaglandins and prostacyclins they basically increase the defense mechanism these defense mechanism are increased by the prostacyclins they increase the defense mechanism and also they decrease the acidic secretion clear now if we are giving ansets for a prolonged time what happens that it will be inhibiting the cyclooxygenase and this cyclooxygenase will is if it is inhibited obviously it will not form the prostaglandins and the prostacyclins which will uh, ultimately results in decrease in the defense mechanism and it, uh, it causes the increase in the acid secretion 
which may result in the gastritis and the gastropathy. So in this way, NSAIDs it causes the gastric injury. Then we have the you can say uremic patients. Uremic patients means in which the urea level in the blood is very high. Now what happens in these patients? In these patients are also you can say may develop the gastritis. How? Basically what happens in these there is ammonium ion here. This ammonium ion they inhibit the bicarbonate secretion. Clear? These ammonium ion they basically they inhibit the bicarbonate ion secretion. Clear? Then in the old ages we also have the increased risk of the gastric injury. In old ages we have the increased risk of the gastric injury. Why? Because of the decreased mucus secretion, because of decreased bicarbonate ion secretion. Clear? Then if there is decreased oxygen delivery, for suppose if you are moving at a high altitude, so due to decreased oxygen delivery there may be resulting in the gastric uh, injury or you can say gastritis or gastropathy may result due to decreased oxygen delivery. Now I have already told you about the symptoms of the disease means the clinical features we have discussed now moving on towards the uh, after uh, discussing the clinical features and the pathogenesis now we are moving on towards the morphologic features of this disease clear we are moving on towards the morphology or morphologic features of this disease what is the morphologic features or morphology first of all you will be seeing the watching the lamina propria this lamina propria you may see a swell lamina propria or you can say edematous lamina propria and you may see a slight uh, vascular congestion clear slightly vascular congestion then if you will observe the epithelium this epithelium is intact and you also you can see the fovular hyperplasia this fovular hyperplasia why it occurs? Because whenever there is a gastric injury, the fovular cells, the mucosal cells, they try to secrete more and more mucus so that it may protect the stomach from the injury. That's why these fovular cells, they proliferate more so that they can uh, quickly and they can means you can say there is a stress on them. Because of the injury, there is a stress on them to produce more and more mucus. That's why there is a fovular hyperplasia. Clear? So this epithelium is intact fovular hyperplasia may occur then uh, if there is a erosion and hemorrhage both uh, means occur acutely so you can also call it as acute uh, you can say erosive hemorrhagic gastritis clear if the erosion and the hemorrhage both are occurring together then we have last thing that is the neutrophils obviously if it is gastritis so neutrophils will be present and if it is gastropathy neutrophils will absent so with this we have completed our basic introduction of the gastritis, gastropathy and their symptoms, the clinical features and about the pathogenesis, their morphology and the agents that cause the, these and their I mean, uh, about something about these agents we have also discussed and in the last we have discussed the morphology. So if you have any question regarding this you can ask in the comment section and thank you so much Allah Hafiz.